Welcome. My name is Aaron Armstrong. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Colorado, as well as the director of interventional cardiology at the Rocky Mountain Regional VA Medical Center in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about an update on carotid stent outcomes, as well as new carotid stent designs. I'd like to thank Dr. Walker and the entire NCVH team uh, for this digital education platform series. So what are the current outcomes of transfemoral carotid artery stenting? The reality is that carotid artery stenting is a more studied procedure than essentially any other endovascular procedure. We have a wealth of data from both observational as well as randomized studies. And I'm just gonna summarize the overall trends over the course of the last few decades. What we have seen are decreasing rates of stroke over time. This is likely due to a combination of more optimal medical therapy as well as an improvement in techniques. And I would say that in general, we have witnessed improved outcomes with operator experience, as well as the regular use of embolic protection devices. And I'm not gonna go into the details of the comparative studies for uh, carotid stenting versus surgery, but I'm just gonna say overall that carotid stenting, uh, when performed in the appropriately select selected patient, has outcomes that are comparable to surgery, although there are, of course, subtle differences with regards to different patient selection groups. I thought it would be useful to just uh, show uh, one of the recent uh, studies. Uh, this was published by uh, Dr. Rosenfield et al. in 2016 in New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, this was a study that looked at asymptomatic carotid uh, patients over the course of five-year follow-up, looking at freedom from all stroke. Uh, these patients were randomized to carotid enterotorectomy versus stenting, and you can see that there was no significant difference uh, with regards to stroke rates during uh, both acute and long-term outcomes. The overall freedom from an event was 93.1% for stenting and 94.7% for carotid endarterectomy. And the same was true of overall survival. Uh, consistent with that, there was a freedom uh, from mortality of 87.1% with stenting and 89.4% with carotid endarterectomy. So clearly, uh, modern outcomes of carotid artery stenting have improved and have shown similar outcomes to carotid endarterectomy. But how can we improve those outcomes even further? Well, I think in general, there's two main approaches. Uh, one of them is improved filters. Uh, this could include the use of smaller pore size as well as improved deliverability of filters uh, in order to provide better embolic protection during carotid intervention. And then the second is improved stent design, uh, which I'm gonna focus on primarily during the rest of this talk. Uh, this includes increased stent flexibility in order to be able to deliver the stent uh, to the site of the lesion uh, with less difficulty as well as more recently, the development of mesh covered or dual layered stents. Uh, the concept here is that by having a mesh or a dual layer, it minimizes plaque protrusion, which may minimize the likelihood of embolic events during carotid stenting, as well as minimize the DWI events that can occur on an MRI that may be associated with subclinical stroke during carotid artery stenting. So I'm gonna go over three new carotid stent designs that have been developed over the course of the last few years. The first of these is the Gore Mesh Carotid Stent System. Uh, you can see here the picture of this stent. Uh, it has a nitinol frame, uh, but then has a um, polymer on it that has a dedicated uh, 100 uh, micrometer pore size filter uh, that's integrated into this, the stent system and uh, really helps minimize plaque protrusion. This is just a comparison of the Gore carotid stent uh, with its cell size after um, placement of the polymer on it. And just a comparison of that as compared to the AccuLink and Exact device. You can see because the Exact device is a closed cell design that it has a smaller cell size than the AccuLink uh, device. And um, what I think is uh, pertinent here is that the Gore carotid stent has a very small cell size which may minimize the likelihood of any plaque protruding across the stent. This stent was studied in the scaffold trial. This enrolled 312 patients with either asymptomatic greater than 80% or symptomatic greater than 50% carotid artery stenosis. Patients who were enrolled in the study were at high risk for carotid endarterectomy due to either anatomic and or comorbid reasons for being able to undergo carotid endarterectomy. And this trial initially enrolled 100 patients uh, with an interim analysis. And then afterwards, it was felt that a screening committee would be helpful due to the fact that some patients were being enrolled who didn't meet some of the anatomic or comorbid criteria that had been designed for the study. So the subsequent 212 patients were reviewed by uh, a screening committee first prior to enrollment. 
And the overall outcomes with the scaffold trial with the Gorkrod stent were really quite excellent. You can see that at 30 days, the uh, incidence of death, stroke, or MI was 3%. The overall incidence of stroke was only 1.1%. And uh, this included 0.8% um, ischemic stroke, ipsilateral, and 0.4% hemorrhagic stroke, ipsilateral. There was a 1.5% incidence of MI and a 0 0.4 uh, incidence of death at 30 days. The one-year outcomes of the scaffold trial have also recently been reported. Uh, this was to help understand whether the gore carotid stent might help minimize long-term events as well. The total rate of death, stroke, or MI at one year was only 4.5%. The rate of ipsilateral stroke from between 31 to 365 days was only 1.2%, uh, consistent with a uh, very low overall rate of stroke during longer-term follow-up. And the clinically driven rates of TLR at one year was, were 1.6% and restenosis 1.2%. So I think really setting a standard for excellent both acute and long-term outcomes with a modern carotid stent. The next stent uh, that I'd like to discuss is the Contigo Medical NeuroGuard uh, Integrated Embolic Protection System. And the concept here is that this is a three-in-one carotid stent system uh, that includes a embolic protection device, the carotid stent, as well as a post dilatation balloon uh, integrated in, into a single device. And what this does is it helps minimize the transit time of embolic protection as well as interventional devices, which may help limit the likelihood of a periprocedural stroke. The filter also has a very small pore size at only 40 micrometers, and the stent is a closed cell design of the stent. This video here uh, demonstrates the Contigo Medical Integrated Embolic Protection System. You can see here the concept is that you pass uh, across the lesion with a wire and then advance the system. Uh, within the system, there's an integrated handle that you then use to deploy the embolic protection filter distal to the site of the carotid artery lesion. As demonstrated here in this video, by uh, turning the dial, you're able to deploy the filter and then once the filter is deployed, you actually unsheath uh, the stent that is integrated into the system such that any embolic material is captured by the filter that's already deployed. And then you deploy a post dilatation balloon that is already mounted on the system as well. So essentially, this is a three-in-one integrated system uh, that really uh, moves the procedure through quickly and minimizes the overall transit time and occlusion of the carotid artery during carotid artery stenting. This uh, device is currently undergoing evaluation in the Performance 2 study. Uh, the plan here is to enroll 305 subjects, and the patients will either have symptomatic or asymptomatic carotid artery stenosis. They will also be at high risk for carotid endarterectomy and meet certain anatomic inclusion criteria. The primary endpoint of this study is planned to be 30-day rates of stroke, death, or MI. So I think it will be very exciting over the course of the next few years to see the uh, initial and long-term results of the Performance 2 study and this integrated embolic protection system. And then the third device I'd like to discuss is the Seaguard embolic protection system. Uh, this is primarily uh, available in Europe and was developed in, in Poland. This uh, stent has a dual layer design. It's an open cell design of the stent cage itself, combined with an ultra closed cell polyethylene terephthalate outer mesh, referred to as Micronet. So we have basically an open cell uh, design, which helps with the flexibility of the stent but then a micro net covering it uh, to minimize plaque protrusion. And this helps trap potential emboli against the arterial wall main while maintaining perfusion to the external carotid artery. The stent also has a fairly unique design in that it has a smart fit technology uh, that is essentially a one size fits all stent from uh, artery diameters ranging from 5.5 to 9 millimeters with really minimal chronic outward force, uh, irregardless of the lumen diameter that is being treated. This just is an example of that dual layer design showing the open cell characteristics uh, as well as the, uh, the dual layer covering and the fact that this really is quite a flexible stent as well. This stent has been studied primarily in the paradigm study. This enrolled 101 subjects, 55 of whom were symptomatic. There were no periprocedural strokes and one minor stroke event that was adjudicated for an event rate of 0.9%. And this picture over here, uh, I think is just a nice example emphasizing the conformability of the stent showing a severe carotid artery lesion uh, with what appears to be potentially an unstable plaque. And then after uh, stent deployment, 
and uh, uh, dilation, uh, really great conformability to the internal carotid artery. So in summary, uh, modern transfemoral carotid artery stenting is associated with very low rates of periprocedural stroke, which I think have improved over time, both due to operator technique as well as new device development. And further improvements in filters and stent design may help further improve these overall outcomes. And over the course of the next few years, additional studies and large data, stents, uh, data sets will continue to help, I think, really bolster the overall safety and durability of carotid artery stenting. Thank you for your time.